On September 12th through 14th, 2008, the Family Research Council held its third annual Values Voter Summit in Washington, D.C. Freedom's Journal magazine sat down with several black leaders to document their response to matters of faith, race, and politics. What follows raises the question, how should black Christians choose the next president? Talk about how your personal faith influences the policies and politics you support. My personal faith is extremely important for the way that I view the world as well as the way that I view politics. And I take that personal faith into every political decision that I make. Well, my personal faith really is at the center of anything I engage in politically. And uh, I believe it's about my worldview, my values, which I pray are biblically informed. Actually, uh, I've just written a book with Tony Perkins called Personal Faith Public Policy. And the idea is that every Christian should start with what they believe, look at that based on what the Bible says, and then vote and take their vote as an extension of their prayer life and their personal walk with God. Being a Christian um, does not distance us, first of all, from the issues of politics. Uh, Jesus was very much involved in politics. In fact, he let it be known very emphatically that my kingdom is not of this world. If it was, we'd be fighting. My faith keeps me focused because my emotions may take me off in another direction. I'll give you a good example on why, why it's very good to be grounded in faith when you have to make decisions that are going to impact not only your future, but the future of your children and the generations to come. Currently, there's an election in America. And many people are saying, oh, well, you have to vote for this candidate because he's black, or this candidate because she's a woman, or vote this way and vote that way. Well, my emotions immediately, surprisingly, don't jump to the color, but to the fact that a woman is running because I'm a woman. My personal faith affects everything that I do, actually, um, whether it's politics or anything else. People will generally talk about a separation between church and state, and there's nothing in our Constitution, nothing in the Bible that says, we should, our, our faith should not impact um, our, our um, understanding of, of um, politics or anything else, or our involvement in politics. Traditionally, African Americans have held to more conservative views regarding social issues. Do you believe that African Americans' core values have shifted so far to the left that we now support the position and social policies of arguably the most liberal candidate to ever run for president? Or have we simply chosen to abandon our principles to vote for a black candidate, regardless of where he stands on the issues? I don't believe, first of all, that the, the value of black Americans have shifted to the left. They've never really been there. I just believe they're in denial of what they really believe and hold dear. You know, so you really have um, a community of people espousing to a certain party that they can't find reason why they're there. Someone sent me a poem called Because He's Black, and they were defending their decision to vote for Barack Obama. In that poem, they said, at the end of the poem, I'm voting for him because he's black, yes, and I have the hope that one day my grandson can grow up and be president. And I said, well, that doesn't mean that you have to vote for him because he's black. Hope cannot come from skin color. Hope comes from Jesus Christ. And so therefore, if we're putting our hope and confidence in flesh, and especially skin color, we're going to be sadly disappointed. I believe that the African American community's political views have for years been kind of a, a potpourri, a mixture of things. From a political point of view, <clears throat> I think that blacks are very loyal. And they're loyal to folks that they believe have helped them come out of great problems in the civil rights era. That being said, there's been an indoctrination process by uh, the liberal machine, and uh, as manifest often in the Democratic Party, but not just the Democratic Party, that has said these are things you're supposed to be for because they advance the culture. And oh, by the way, we also support civil rights. And I've heard on some radio programs I've been on where a person has called in or said, 
that they feel torn because they, they vote the Democrat Party, but they, they know that the Democrat Party doesn't necessarily share the same values that they share. Yet they feel somehow that there's something wrong with the Republican Party. We've been told for a long time Republicans don't like black people. Republicans don't, don't care about the poor. Republicans don't. You know, this, this, this caricature, this negative caricature of the Republican Party and of conservatives is if to be a conservative, you have to be racist. You're racist. So um, that's a mixed bag to say that they've moved away. Uh, I would say there are some who have moved away because of the whole black issue. And then there are some who actually are just liberal. Well, I think the dilemma for black people is that we are a very confused community of people. We have a, what I would call a patchwork theology. So even though often when polling data uh, is reflected about black America, it's inconsistent with how blacks live. So blacks are expressing through, if you were this, if this were the question, are you pro-life, they express what they would like to be. And this is why we keep seeing blacks polling high in social matters, but yet they're, there's nowhere else reflective in black community. We can all agree this 2008 election cycle will result in unprecedented historical significance. What excites you most about the potential outcome of this election? The prospect of having our nation's first African-American president? Or that a strongly principled Christian woman could be the first female vice president? He's not the man that I would choose for a number of reasons that have to do with my biblical faith, but it shows me it's the, it's the the trajectory of the culture and the impact of King's dream. We are really living in a time where the content of that man's character is going to be the standard by which America judges him to be a president or not. So because African-Americans have been steadily making, uh, making progress, it has opened the door for somebody like Barack Obama if he will do what he, he's doing or do what he's done. Um, my problem is that he is so liberal that his views are just, um, you know, I, I can't support him because of his views. I can be proud that he's done it as an African American, but I, my hope is that the first black president is actually conservative and his views actually line up with mine. Now, Sarah Palin's views line up with mine, and as someone who's an evangelical Christian, that means uh, a lot more to me because for me, the walls between black and white have actually been torn down in Christ. I've never been one motivated or moved by race or gender politics, but what I, excites me most about this particular election is that we have both race and gender reflected. And the reason for that is because now we can get to what really matters for this country, and that is the direction that this country is going to go into for the next hundred years. The, over the next four years, we perhaps will see two and maybe even three Supreme Court openings, and that will determine how we see America and what America uh, uh, believes over the next hundred years. So that the fact that now one side has a black and one side has a female, we can move beyond those discussions and start getting down to what really matters. I am very excited about the McCain-Palin ticket, simply because they support the values that mean the most to me. It is a plus to me that Sarah Palin is a woman because I've been elected to office as a wife and mother. I've been appointed to office as a woman. And at the time, I was a mother and then became a grandmother during that process. And I knew that I could still be a mother and take care of my children and then serve the larger community. So I'm very excited about that. But it's most exciting that the McCain-Palin ticket uh, agrees with my values and my views. And this is a lady who, who, who stands for life. Uh, she's proven her commitment to her children in the midst of trials. That's one thing about Christians, you know, we're not, we're not um, uh, immune to problems. We have them. We, we have setbacks too. The difference is how we choose to handle them. Okay? We, don't, we don't choose to handle situations without responsibility and accountability. You know, so even in the midst of her family struggles, she's handling it. That's not to say Obama's not handling his, but I'm just celebrating where I can't celebrate. 